Hello, I'm Richard Bertine. I'm back at the Ghostnet Kitchen, where today I'm going to show you how to make bagels. So for the bagel, before we start, I'm going to make the ferment. It's going to give you flavor and structure into your, your bagel and give it a nice chewiness. So it's a very simple mixture of fresh yeast. If you want fresh yeast, you can use a bit of dry yeast, strong bread flour and warmish water. And we're going to put everything together and leave it ferment for a couple of hours at least. So I'm going to start with my yeast, my water, give it a bit of a swirl and then put the flour on the top. You don't have to work it too hard, just mix it well. It becomes like a sponge when you ferment. You can leave it overnight in the fridge too. The longer you leave it, about 24 hours maximum, the more flavor you get. And see it's not liquid, just work it a little bit with your finger. Don't over mix it. That's all you need to do. Back in the bowl. So that's going to rest now. I'm going to cover it with a cloth. Just that, and leave it somewhere nice and warm by the oven. Perfect. If it's very drafty, put a plastic bag over the top so you don't get the crust on top. But patience now. It's been rested for about two hours. You can see this now, it's like a sponge. For the bagel now, I'm going to put our ferment into the bowl. I'm going to put my water and a little bit of honey. You can use sugar, but the honey just gives you a different, um, different flavor and also a different color into your dough, which I love. The flour on the top, strong bread flour, fresh yeast if you can, or dried yeast if you can't, and my salt for about three or four minutes. So this dough is not soft, it's quite a tight dough to get a nice structure that you get into your typical bagel, nice and chewy, elastic crust on top, which is delicious. So we're mixing the dough on three or four minutes on slow speed again, just to blend your ingredients. It's not a very soft dough, so it's easier to mix than a brioche dough, for example. Okay, it's been going for about six, seven minutes now. You can see the dough is quite firm, but it's got that nice elasticity, which is what I'm looking for on this one. So that's done. Let's take it out. I'm going to give the dough a hug and then put it to bed. So look at that dough in here. Quite firm, but beautiful. So I'm just making sure I get a nice top. Tuck it in like this. Give it a nice structure, non-stick side. Got the air still. It's tight, but there's still some lightness into it. I just got the rest now. Little bowl and a cloth on top, and give it a good hour at least. My dough for the bagel, I can see it, look at this. That's so exciting. Look at this, beautiful. So it's been resting for about two hours now. Turn my scraper, turn my dough over. Don't put flour, you don't need flour. It doesn't stick. And don't do too much to the dough, just see what so My top is underneath, and then cut it a strip of dough like so. And then it's about between 80 and 100 gram each, so don't worry if you're a bit heavier, but try to keep your dough all the same size, so you get much better equal baking. You can see with the bagel, you can make lots of them and freeze them. They freeze amazingly well, so when you got the knack of doing them, you can always do a bit more. I should get another one with this, shelves bits, perfect. The traditional way of making bagels is this way. You just get your, your dough there, so my top is still underneath in here. Flat it up a little bit. And just imagine rolling the dough by itself. So fold it once like this, push it down, turn it over, and fold it in, into the middle again. It's a bit like shaping a baguette. And again, and again, and you just roll it like this. And then you can just put it together like this, put your hand like this, and just roll it. That's one way of doing it. And I put them on the cloth to prove in here. On the cloth so I can lift them up and put them in the water. I'll show you again. Another way is to fold it over itself like so. So you end up with a little bowl, nice and tidy. Just do them like that and let it rest for a few minutes. Make sure it's nice and tight. Let's go back to the other one. Don't worry too much, just as long as you get your dough tied up together, you can't go very much wrong. But I like to have a nice clean spine and then control everything. This one I'm going to use a rolling pin on top. Very simple, you put your rolling pin in the middle and just roll the dough through it. Make it roll a few times. There you go. If you don't have a rolling pin, do this. There you go, sorted. <laughs> so there you can see the one we shaped by hand, nice uniform, through the rolling pin, but there's two different ways of doing it, so just have a go which one suits you best. So that's going to prove covered. 
So while this proving, we're going to get the water ready for plunging up a bagel before baking them. They're still growing. So I start with the top side down. Big and beautiful. Get four in there if I can. The little bath there would give them a nice chewy nice on the crust. So that's my top back in here. I'm going to put this into my seeds and lift it up. Put all of it. So they do grow a lot in the pan as well, so always make sure you get a big pan. So my last batch going in now. Oven just dropped to just just below 200, but we'll be fine. Still some ash burning. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, smell delicious. Perfect, perfect. I love the smell of wood in there. It just really makes it such a different, uh, different buns. Nice chewy texture. Still warm. Can't wait. Bit of cream cheese. Well, a lot of cream cheese, really, on both sides. And then some beautiful smoked salmon. I love a bit of parsley with it, just a tiny bit. You can put chive if you want to, or dill. Black pepper, squeeze of lemon. There we go, your bagel. For the full recipe, go on to gosnet.com and you find everything there. Mm.